Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on our uh, enabling LTO migration from LTO 5 and 6 up to LTO 8. I'm joined today by TC, CEO of Storage DNA, and I am Steve McKenna with Studio Network Solutions. I'm the head of sales over here. Um, we do have some very cool workflows that we're going to be showing you as you go through this migration as we have to migrate uh, to get newer tapes of larger capacity and to make to ensure their longevity. Uh, a lot of these older archives don't have any tags or ability to search or find the content that was in them. Uh, TC is going to show you some ways to use Storage DNA's evolution product um, to do some smart migration and to get this stuff cataloged. And then I'm going to show you the additional value add of partnering that with SNS Storage, our Evo Storage, in order to get that auto tagged through artificial intelligence using a variety of different cloud services. So with that, uh, I'll turn it over to TC. Go ahead and take it away. Cool. I'll just uh, start sharing my screen. Cool. All right, guys. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Steve. Uh, we're going to be talking about AI enabling your LTO 5 and 6 archives. And, uh, you know, thank you to Studio Networks to uh, come together with us to present this uh, joint solution. Uh, what we're going to be talking about today is a quick introduction. Uh, who are we as Storage DNA? We'll be introducing a flagship product, DNA Evolution, and we'll uh, dive right into smart migration, how it works, and what are the bundle details. So um, a little bit about us. Uh, we're headquartered in Irvine, California. We're focused as a company on building software solutions, uh, focused on the m and &E space around digital LTO tape. Uh, we have a great worldwide channel. Uh, we have over 800 deployments, 90 plus Avid Interplay, 60 plus CAD DV. Uh, we integrate really well with Avid and Adobe setups. We have integrations with every media, NAS, and SAN out there, for example, SNS. And what makes us really interesting is we can start off with uh, install sizes that are about half a petabyte at the low end, all the way up to about 20 petabytes, <clears throat> where customers and large broadcasters are storing very large data sets uh, with our product and platform. So what exactly is DNA Evolution? DNA Evolution is our flagship product. Uh, to put it very, very simply, uh, think of us as a data archiving and a data movement engine that bridges the movement of data from primary, uh, nearline, secondary disk storage, for example, in SNS, uh, to LTO tape drives and libraries, for example, a Spectra stack. And what we do sort of in the movement of this data is we also do a considerable amount of metadata extraction. We've built over 300 metadata extractors, and we are building up a very media-rich database of the content that's sitting in your archive. Uh, beyond moving the assets and extracting metadata, we also tie really well with both IT and media-based workflows. A lot of our customers use us for large-scale uh, data backup and archiving from their NAS and SANS. So you can imagine a near line storage with camera masters being dropped in and DNA evolution automatically picking up this data and moving it to LTO tape. Uh, we also have the ability to understand AVID bin sequence formats, including Adobe bin sequence project formats. And what this gives you is the capability to say, hey, I want to move an entire project off of my online storage to LTO, uh, and we do that really well. Uh, the engine also interfaces with media asset management systems like CAD DV Interplay, and we can also understand simple AF and XML exports from your editorial applications to move the data off to LTO tape. So um, diving right into smart migration, uh, the first thing we want to sort of chat about is, uh, you know, why did we build this data migration platform in the first place. Um, we have numerous customers and a lot of them invested in LTO 5 and 6 uh, archives uh, a few years ago. And uh, what we found is a number of them are now sitting on, you know, 500 to 1000 plus LTO 5 and 6 tapes. With the introduction of LTO 8 drives, uh, LTO 8 drives don't uh, read LTO 5 and 6 tapes anymore. So these customers are sitting there and saying, all right, we have to now eventually migrate these tapes. And everybody's starting to look at a game plan on how to do that. 
Now, one of the things we've heard is a lot of customers are saying that, all right, I do want to move to LTO 8, but I might be interested in keeping a copy of my data online, either on spinning disk or keeping a copy in the cloud. A few other clients are considering using AI tagging capabilities so that this entire archive on five and six can be auto tagged. And that's kind of where we you know, have partnered with Studio Network Solutions to bring you a really neat automated way to get your data out of LTO 5 and 6, but also get it AI auto tagged. And you'll see how all these pieces sort of come together in the workflow we've created. Now, one of the things that customers pointed out very clearly is, yes, they are interested in moving this data out from 5 and 6, uh, but they need this to be simple and automated. We have customers who say, we don't really have the manpower to sit there manually loading tapes. So they need something that can manage this whole process of going from five and six uh, to online disk, to, to proxies, to tagging, back to maybe LTO8. They need this whole engine to be fully automated. And that's really where you know, the smart migration engine has come from. So what we're gonna be talking about today and what you're seeing up here is a step-by-step -step workflow on what we've designed. And what we'll jump into next after describing the workflow is the actual user interface and how all this ties together. So let's kind of start walking through the process first. Uh, the step one would be that you would take your existing five and six tapes and you would load it into a LTO library. Now this LTO library could be one that you've partitioned with five and six drives, or it could be a single library that has six drives in it. Now the first thing the DNA evolution software does is that it reads these tapes, loads them into the drives, and starts to create a catalog. Now, the reason we want to create a catalog is because a lot of customers have no idea what's sitting on these tapes. These tapes could have been delivered to them by a client, and now they have no idea other than on an Excel sheet that here's the name of the project. They don't know what data's on it, and they have no idea what's on it. So the first thing we want to give our clients is a fully searchable, browsable catalog of what's on these tapes even before you start to pull them out. The next step is once you've figured out which tapes have data that you care about, you can have Evolution start to pull the data off of the tapes and to restore them or migrate them out to a storage system like an SNS Evo. Now, the reason the SNS Evo uh, has some really interesting workflows is because when we restore the data of the tapes to an SNS Evo, Steve will show you that we can now set up an automated uh, process by which the SNS Evo and SNS Share Browser can create proxies and can auto tag this content for you. So the data that was on five and six tapes is now off on your online storage. You have proxies and you have it tagged. And as a final step, uh, Storage DNA, DNA Evolution also integrates with the Share Browser MAM so that you can then send this data back off to LTO 7 and 8. So with this workflow, what we'll demonstrate is you can start off with five and six tapes on a shelf, load them into your library, and now this is gonna get cataloged, restored, proxies are gonna get created, they're gonna get auto tagged, and the data can also be sent off to seven and eight. So a complete round trip workflow from five and six to seven or eight. All right, so I'll jump right in and show you guys a, a really quick demo uh, of the concepts. So what I've done is I've logged into the DNA Evolution user interface, which is a web-based interface. And the first thing I'm going to do is click on the Clients tab. Clients are essentially all the machines that I have in my Evolution system that have some LTO hardware connected to it. So Evolution is a highly scalable platform. I can have multiple systems with multiple libraries. Uh, and what you're seeing here is four, four systems, but I'm gonna click on this one, which has a four drive 80 slot system connected to it. As you can see, I have four drives. Now what I can do is I can kick off imports and migrates across all four drives. We will be using one for this uh, demo. And I'll say import tape, and I'm gonna go ahead and I can say add. And what I can do in the screen is select one or more tapes. Uh, and this is the process that I described earlier where we will be creating a catalog of what's on these tapes. So I can select these tapes, hit OK, and then click the Start Import uh, process. Now what that's going to do once it runs, uh, and I ran this beforehand because we didn't want to wait for it, is if I select this archive that had previously imported some tapes to, what you'll end up seeing is a full catalog of what's on these tapes. 
So you see clips uh, on each one of these tapes. Uh, and now I have an instant idea on what the data is, which is sitting on each one of these tapes. Now, this is the process where I described to you guys where people want to know what's on these tapes. I have not restored anything from it. I've simply created a searchable catalog. So let's say these tapes are something that I do want to actually restore the data off of. I would go back to my data manager. I would select one or more drives. And then in this case, I'm going to say migrate to disk. Uh, once again, I'll select the tapes that I want to migrate. Um, I could select one or more of these tapes that I'm looking to migrate. Um, and once I've selected the tapes, um, I'm going to then suggest select my target location. And in this case, what I'm doing is I'm selecting uh, uh, an SNS uh, Evo target volume where I will be migrating all my data. So this is a SMB network share exported off of the Evo. And this is where the data will be restored to from the five and six tapes. Um, now, the interesting part is once the data is restored onto the SNS Evo volume, that's kind of where the share browser magic will kick off. And um, I'm going to hand this off to, to Steve uh, to highlight how this integrates with uh, the share browser AI proxy generation and auto tagging. So let me hand this off to Steve now. Steve, you should have control. Thanks so much, TC. Yeah, so guys, the way it's going to work now, so as Storage DNA's evolution product restores these tapes back and creates its catalog, it has to restore it to um, some form of disk, in this case, an SNS Evo. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into the admin utility of the Evo and show you what we've set up. So when you log in, I've hit the IP address of my server, um, and we'll start off by kind of looking at the workspaces or folders we've created. So storage DNA, I've got one called SDNA Evolution. This is where I would be restoring these tapes to. Um, you can see right now it has an unlimited capacity. Um, the total size of this system is about a terabyte. Um, our systems do scale into the multi-petabytes, uh, so if you have large shape libraries that need to be restored. But all I'm going to do now is come down to the Automations tab, and then we have this AI auto tagging set up. So I edit here. So setting this up, once your Amazon account is uh, configured, we just do AI auto tagging as the name of the automation. SDNA Evolution is the workspace I'm watching, the folder where we're restoring things to. And every time a new file arrives, and over here with the file extension, we can say star would be every file. This could be only tag .mov files if you're working with QuickTime Rev ProRes. It could be .mxf files, whatever um, the case may be. And by doing so, Evo is going to do a couple of things down here. We, we're going to stack up some tasks. So the first thing I want to do is send this thing off to be um, tagged. So I'm actually going to remove this because that's not the first thing I want to do. The first thing I'm going to want to do is actually generate that proxy. So we're going to go ahead and refresh here. We'll scroll down, add task, and we are going to generate a transcoded H.264 proxy. We can now use this to review in the Share Browser web app or on the desktop application or through our NLE, which I'll show you here in just a second. Um, in the meantime, we're going to generate the proxy, save changes, just store the proxy onto our proxy share um, here. So as Evo generates the proxies, we're going to simultaneously have it, once it finishes, use the AIML service here. Edit, just set AIML. And what that's going to do is send these proxies off to Amazon's recognition service to have them tagged back. Um, rather than doing this uh, in real time, uh, just kind of as TC did, if we go back to the old uh, cooking show analogy, we've got some pre-baked here. Uh, so I'm going to go into my desktop application real quick, and we're going to do a quick search for swim. Nope. Uh, looks like we cleared the metadata out from earlier was supposed to be pre-baked. So <laughs> what I'm going to do to kind of force it, because there's a couple of ways to deal with the um, 
AI auto tagging, we can do also do this from our web app here. So I can come in, simply select a file. I actually had just done this one. So it came back with Alps, Mountain, Nature, Outdoors. I can clear those tags. I can add additional tags. I can watch the clip here in its proxy form and time code stamp it with notes at specific parts of the time code for my edit team if we are coming back to an old project. The way that works, uh, again, this would happen automatically with the watch folder that we're restoring to, but I'm going to force it here with this button and we'll just give it a couple of minutes to, uh, to catch up here. In the meantime, uh, these proxies are also available to me if you're using something like Adobe Premiere. Adobe Premiere does uh, support panels. So we can do, helps them out the volume. Here, we can come in and we can use our share browser panel to review this material up here. Um, so I can go find that Alps clip. Um, from our Premiere panel. We can take a look at these proxies and drag them into projects as well uh, on that side. Now if we pop back to our web app, we should hopefully see the vegetables. Oh, we're still waiting for it to come back, but this is going to come back with tomatoes, broccoli, avocado. They'll find all of that stuff. And in the meantime, we can also add additional tags here. Um, that are specific to our workflow, maybe things like a job number uh, or client name that wouldn't necessarily be caught by scene recognition uh, auto tagging. And then when everything is said and done, once it's been restored, we've seen everything is tagged over here. We can simply right click Let's see if I can find this. on this folder and send the whole thing straight back to storage DNA to the LTO8 side of the array, uh, or to of the library on that side, utilizing SpectraLogic um, or whatever LTO hardware you're going to be using underneath. Because I'd also like to point out, if you do have any questions, there's a questions tab in the uh, lower right of your control panel. Feel free to submit your questions there and we will answer them at the end um, on that side. But we can't find. There's our ELPS shot there. And then again, we can send that right into storage DNA um, back to the uh, LTO8 with that metadata coming in via XML to the storage DNA catalog that they have been generating on their side. And with that, I'll hand it back to TC to go over some of the year end bundles. Here we have our, our tags came back. So avocado, broccoli, flora, since broccoli is a flower. Uh, and then we can clear out the ones that we don't want here. This is a good chance to review that stuff. With that, I'm going to hand it back to TC to go over some of the uh, end of year specials that we're running uh, so that you guys can start getting all of that old footage archived, uh, re archived onto a newer medium, a much larger medium, a much faster medium, um, and tagged and organized so that you can actually use the data that you have. Um, data is only useful if you can find it. So here we go, TC. Take it away. Well, thank you, Steve, for the great demo. Um, jumping right into uh, some of the bundles we've created, the first one we have is uh, as an SNS Neuroline bundle. This is a 96 terabyte uh, storage system. Comes in at 20 to 5, includes all of the AI tagging and the share browser software included. And it's got some great performance specs as well. Steve, you want to kind of highlight some of that stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the neat thing with our software and with our MAM is whichever one of our servers you purchase, all of the software is free in unlimited fashion. So you can have as many users um, utilizing our database for asset tagging, file locking uh, that you would like. And all of them come with our automations engine. So these we can automate these file moves off to the cloud for auto tagging. We can automate them off to the archive for backup. We also have hooks into um, Amazon's S3 system. You can use our API to automate moves to the cloud. As TC said at the beginning of this demonstration, uh, you may want to have a few different copies in a few different mediums and uh, some with some geographic redundancy. So while clients ask us about cloud, 
cloud is still not nearly as cost effective as tape, but does provide the um, geographic redundancy should a building burn down or something like that. So having a few different backups is absolutely handy there. All of these plugins, all of the stuff that we've shown you today on, from the Evo perspective, again, is included in this price. So you don't have to worry about any per seat license fees. The Nearline server puts out about 900 megabytes a second, so you can have multiple LTO libraries feeding this simultaneously. It is incredibly fast for something that's branded a Nearline server. There are online servers on the market, tier one, that are designed for live edit that only put out four or five or 600 megabytes a second. So this Nearline server is a very cost effective way to get a large capacity of storage to do these restores and come back and forth. Um, 96 terabytes will yield about 84 usable in this particular array, which would be enough to restore an entire 48 tape library um, and leave the stuff, leave those assets here while they're simultaneously being written back to LTO8 onto that newer medium. Cool. Um, thanks for that, Steve. Uh, I also want to highlight some of the LTO bundles that we're including. Uh, we are, for the first time, uh, have a rental bundle uh, with this. Uh, it includes an eight slot uh, LTO library with one drive and a M-Logic connector. So all you really do is provide a Mac and the rest of the software and the hardware is included. And you can use it as a 900 month rental to essentially start migrating your data. Uh, we also have two purchase options, one for 24 and one for 48 slots from storage DNA. One um, uh, of the interesting things we've done is really partnered up with Spectra where they have an 80 slot two drive a system for $35,000. And what's interesting about Spectra is they will loan you as many LTO6 drives as you need uh, to do your migration. So, uh, you know, we've put together a lot of great options to help you really get started with this whole LTO five and six migration. Um, and that's pretty much all I had. Is there any questions or anything else you want to add, Steve? No, just to thank everyone for uh, listening to us go on about restoring and upgrading archive. And uh, are there, if there are any questions, guys, now would be a great time to enter them. Uh, and feel free to give us a call at uh, Studio Network Solutions at 314-733-0551, uh, or to reach out to TC or Jeff over at Storage DNA. Uh, TC, if you want to give them a phone number, yeah, uh, you and can we can just email at uh, sales at storagedna.com. There you go. Um, guys, a lot of these bundles and uh, pricing is good through the end of the year. So the end of the year is usually a pretty light time in production. It is a really good time um, to get everything organized and get these migrations done so you're not trying to do it in the middle of a busy production schedule. Um, TC, it doesn't look like we have any questions. So thank you for joining me today. And thanks to everyone for listening. Thank you. Have a great day.